CompTIA just released the new Network Plus exam N10-009, and I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity to take this test on June 21st, the next day after it came out. I wanted to take it the day it came out, but I couldn't get a test in date, so that was the earliest date I got. Now, I did pass the test over an 800, and in this video, what I want to do is I want to tell you what you need to be studying. I'm going to go over topics, so what I did is when the exam finished, I basically brain dumped all the topics, not the questions, because that would be against the law. I brain dumped the topics that I saw and what you on two piece on two sheets of paper. I'm going to show you guys the picture of these and we're going to go over this in this video. I'm going to tell you all the topics you need to be studying. And if you're studying right now for your network plus, you need to watch this entire video fast forward or speed me up, but don't cut it off. Don't jump around the video because you're going to miss some pretty serious information. And there was a ton of surprises in this exam that I wasn't planning for. Like, I really was like, wow, that's a, that's crazy. They would ask me that. Any which way, let's get started. I'm Andrew Ramdial, by the way. I've been teaching IT courses since 2000. I think I taught my first CompTIA class in 2000, December. So, long time now. I've taught hundreds of thousands of students around the world. Let's get started. So the first thing up I want to talk, I want to show you guys is proof that I actually took the test. Right? How do you guys know I'm even telling the truth? So I am at Pearson View. This is uh, where you uh, you would go to schedule your exam. You just go to view.com and you log in and it brings you to this. This is CompTIA's login. I'm going to go to, go to my certifications. I'm going to, I zoomed in on the screen here. We're going to go down here to history and you'll notice N10009 CompTIA Network Plus we got a passing grade. We took this June 21st, 2024. So now you guys know, hey, at least he's not full of crap. Okay, so a couple of things about me that I really want to point out that makes my course very different than others is, first of all, the links to my course is going to be below. But, you know, I don't teach a course. I don't like teaching a course if I haven't taken a test. I know a lot of instructors, they release courses the day the test comes out. That means they film the entire course. Before the test, I don't know how they do that. Like, how do you teach something you don't even know? Maybe they were certified in the older Network Plus. I don't do that. I, every exam, every course that I teach, I take the, take the exam before I teach it. If I could. Sometimes I can't because once you're certified, you can't retake it. Anyway, Trey, let's get into it. What topics you need to know and tips and advice that you should be studying. So if you're currently studying for this exam, here are the tips that you need to know. Now, again, what I did was the moment I finished the test... I sat down, I took out, I do carry a trusty notebook, I'm an old, old school writer, and I didn't type, I wrote down everything that I can remember topic-wise, not questions, I don't remember questions, uh, topic-wise that people need to know, that notes that I need to make in order to make my course amazing. It comes on two pages. And what I did was I took a picture of it, all right, I took a real picture of it, uh, and we are going to take a look at those pictures right now. So there, it comes on two sheets, okay? There's two sheets of paper that I took. Um, you can see it here. This one, ah, where is it? This one and this one. Let's get started. So let's go over the topics. Let's get right into it. Let's go over some of the topics that you guys need to know. And I know my squiggly handwriting and my misspelling. You're probably not going to remember. Every, you're not going to be able to understand this. But So let me explain it what I meant when I wrote it. So let's go through the topics that I saw. Now, this video is not going to be a copyrighted video. I'm not going to tell you exam questions or what the simulators were. So let's get right off the bat. First thing up, the exam starts out. You got 90 minutes with 80 questions. Here's what surprised me right off the bat. This really got me. Now, I finished the exam in about 35 minutes. Now, what really got me was the moment the test started, I got a whole bunch of performance-based questions. These were like simulators where you got to drag things or you got to configure things or you got to type things into some kind of command prompt or you got to figure things out or manage or, or, re or reconfigure a diagram. There were six of them and they took up an enormous amount of time. These things took me, now keep in mind guys, I have 66 certifications. I have tons of Cisco, Microsoft, a bunch of CompTIA certs and so on. So they took me quite a while. So if you're a newbie, or a noob, then what you want to do is you want to study really well because these simulators are going to kill your time. So let's go through some of the topics. As I go through it, I'll tell you guys what were the simulators. So right off the bat, I put all the simulators that I remember right at the beginning. 
So the first thing up that I do remember is you got to before you before you walk in the exam room, you're gonna want to know these things, okay? The first thing up is no device placement. For example, you gotta know when you're setting up a network, where do you put a hub? Where do you put a switch? Where do you put a router? Where do you put the access point? What's connected to what? Do you connect the access point to the switch or do you connect it to the firewall? Do you connect it to the router? Does the router connect to the firewall? You know, what happens here? You have to know in diagramming what connects where. Now, you do have to understand simple configurations. Now, what I mean simple, you got to know like show commands. You got to know, okay, this device can hold this configuration. Now, you have to be able to read routing tables. This was an interesting type of a simulator because I wasn't expecting this one. This was real surprising. You have to know, okay, if I'm going to be adding a static route to get this router to talk to this router to get this to for this router to get to this particular part of the network, what would you be at it, right? What exactly is that static route? So you got to be able to read and write static route. Now in the course, we do a lot of hands on, right? So in I had to revamp my course this weekend and I added this giant lab section. I'm basically going to make you CCNA certified. Not all of it, but most of it. So in the course, I am going to teach you guys how to configure Cisco routers and switches. You notice I configure them on real switches as this one literally sitting right on the chair here. And at the bottom of me, there is a giant router. Yes. Oh my God, a giant router. Yeah, this is a Cisco router that I use during the course to tell you guys all about it. And we get to set it up and then I show you guys how to use packet tracer because I don't think you want this in your house. And you shouldn't have that in your house. In fact, I don't even want it in my house. So what happens is you got to know commands. And that's the crazy part. I even wrote crazy. No Cisco commands. Now you don't got to actually memorize them. The simulators, if you type help, gives you the commands, but you got to understand the show commands. And what I mean the commands is you got to be able to read them. So if you look at a switch command and it says the link is up but connected or not what does that mean you have to know that you have to know what command would like find arp addresses right what, what command would find a mac address to an ip address and things like that which is basically like arp now the other thing here is you have to know cable placement like what cable belongs where if i'm connecting this what kind of fiber cable do i use can i use a cat can i use a cat six here is, is this a single mode fiber? Is this a multi mode fiber? What kind of fiber cable can I use in that section? So that's what I mean by cable placement. Now, these I just put here. These are all over the exam. Oh, you better know your ports. Now, the good news is CompTIA in the objectives tells you the ports you need to know. There's a table in the objective 1.7, I believe. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. It tells you what cables you need to know, uh, ports you need to know. And you guys need to know all of them. You, you need to know 110 for 143, like POP, IMAP, 80 for HTTP, 443, HTTPS, LDAP, FTP, SSH, all these different protocols. You need to know the ports on a lot of them. Now, in the objectives, acronym, oh my God, galore. CompTIA does not give you the definitions. If I tell you guys... <clears throat> STP, Spanish Tree Protocol. You know what that means? What does it do? Well, it, it's, it's about preventing switching loops. You guys need to know your acronyms. Now, CompTIA in the objectives does have a list of acronyms. So make sure that you know it. In the course, of course, I cover every single one of them. By the way, in the course, in the course notes that's coming out, I have a list of all the acronyms and I also have the cheat study guide coming out that's going to give you a definition of every single one of the acronym and a comprehensive review of every one of the um, objectives. Look for that coming soon. I'm going to give you on it. Now, a couple of things that just write off the things I remembered, like DNS records, what are CNAME, what are MX records. If you're securing a mail server, what type of record is that? It's a TXT record. You need to know those types of things. Uh, pros and cons of cable types. When would you use fiber over a twisted pair? You need to know that. Uh, cable heads. What type of head belongs on what cable? If this is a fiber cable, is it a B and C connector? Is it an SC connector? Is it an RJ45? You need to know things like that. Now, 
they killed me on, for whatever reason, this is why, I don't know, is this a net plus or was this a CCNA exam? Because it felt like it for a while. Lots of routing protocol questions. Know all the pros and cons and the characteristics of all the different routing protocols, OSPF, EIGRP, BGP, that type of thing. Make sure you know it and know it well. Of course, you're going to have wireless configuration. You're going to have to know some of the pros and cons of, hey, you know, uh, 802, we got 11, we got G, N, AX, AC, all that stuff. You need to make sure you understand it. Now, you're taking Network Plus. I do have that four-hour lesson in my course, four hours, that teaches you everything you need to know about IP addressing, and you better know it well. Do not walk into that room. If I tell you a slash 26, how many computers can you have? How many subnets can you have? If I tell you a slash, if I tell you the IP, the the subnet mass is 255, 255.252. .252. What type of connection or what? Well, it's a point-to-point -point connection. It's only two machines allowed on that. You have to know how to subnet, and you better know it well. They're not going to ask you regular IP addressing question. They're going to ask you subnetting questions, which is beyond that. Uh, moving on here, we want to make sure that we know device configs, such as FTP. So... What can you configure a switch? Like, if you're configuring a switch, what is ST, what, are, what are different configurations? Now, you don't have to actually configure the switch, but you have to know what type of configs I can give this giant device. So if I'm plugging in multiple switch and I have redundant ports, I got to make sure I enable what protocol? STP. If I want one of these ports to get data from every one of the ports, what do I have to enable? Port spanning or port mirroring? Yeah, that's what you need to know. And you have to know that really well. When and why certain tech would be useful. For example, in what scenario would a company want to implement a VPN? Maybe because they have users working from home and they want that end-to-end -end encryption. When would they implement QoS? Maybe they want to prioritize certain traffic, you would implement QoS. So some of these terms you need to know well. Now, you do need to know characteristics of, net of attack. You're not going to get a ton of security questions, but there were five, six, I guess. Uh, for example, somebody's flooding a CAM table. What, what exactly is a CAM table? What's the table in the switch that holds the MAC address to the port number? If they're flooding that, they're basically doing a MAC flooding. You need to know the characteristics of certain attacks. There's not a ton of security. This isn't security plus, but you do need to know that. Now, when it comes to security, there was a lot of protocols. In the objectives, there's a list of protocols, FTP, SMTP, um, SSH, you need to know what those protocols are, and you do need to know what's the secure version versus the insecure version. So don't open port 80, open 443. Don't open Telnet, use SSH. Things like that, and make sure you know the port numbers. All right, that's all I can remember for this test. The test was not that difficult. In fact, it was fairly easy. It's mostly a test of definition. If you understand the concepts, you're going to be fine. But when it comes to the simulator, you got to do the labs. You got to practice. If you get my course, again, the links are below. If you get my course, now my course isn't done yet. I'm making this video. The course isn't done yet. It's probably going to be done one to two weeks after this course, this video is released. And in the end of the end of the course, I cover all the labs. Make sure to do those labs. We're going to, and the labs are free. You guys can do them on your own machine. I'm going to show you the physical hardware, but no one wants physical hardware. And I don't recommend having physical hardware in your house because there's just things like Cisco Packet Tracer. I'm going to go through how to build an entire network in Cisco's uh, Packet Tracer. I'm going to show you all the commands you need to know for your exam. So when you go in there, you're actually going to be able to ace it. So hopefully you guys found this video super, super helpful. Even if you're not taking a course with me, hopefully you found some of the topics that you need to study. Now, in the next coming weeks, guys, I'm going to be releasing a bunch of practice questions right here on the channel so you guys can practice with me um, absolutely free of charge. I'm only giving you a bunch of tips how to pass this exam and many other CompTIA exams. So please, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a like if you found value in this video. And hopefully I'll see you in the course, and I'll see you in the next video.